Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another super fun, exciting video on this YouTube channel here. Uh, yes, we are back at it again on YouTube.com. I hope you're doing well. Now, today's video, what exactly do I want to do? Well, I would like to wrap up on the number pad application that we were working on in the very last video. So quickly, let me just rerun this bad boy inside of the iPhone XS Max simulator. You can see our collection view controller is now rendering out all of these cells here. So one, two, three, and four, five, six, and so on and so forth. Uh, what I'm gonna do in today's lesson is to kind of render out the header up here that allows you to you know, tap on these cells at the very middle. And we are going to fill up this header with the actual dial numbers that we click on. As you can see, as the text sort of expands at the very top, the font actually shrinks so that you can see all of the text just like that. If we have enough time left over in today's lesson, I would like to show you how to render out this row as well with the call button here. And also the backspace that will obviously eliminate the text on the right side. So pretty good stuff here. Hopefully you are excited about today's lesson. If you have any questions or comments about last video, uh, make sure to let me know down below. But having said that, let's kind of get started with the header up at the very top here that I would like to kind of render out with a label. Uh, this guy is pretty easy to do and pretty easy to code out as well. Uh, first thing I'll do is go back into view did load and you kind of have to register a header for your collection view. So let's say register and you know, you can try to type in register header, but you don't really get anything. You have to type out this method, which is really hard to say. Uh, register view class for supplementary view of kind and reuse identifier. So what the heck are these three parameters here, right? Well, the first one is the actual class for your header, kind of similar to your key cell here. So let me show you how this is done. A lot of magical code that I'll type out right now. Let's create a new Swift file. Let's call this the dialed numbers header. I think that's what I called it in my example here. So let's just click on that, copy the name uh, here. So import UI kit and class dial numbers header. This guy will be a UI collection a reusable view. Uh, I believe you can also use a collection view cell, but this guy is uh, going to work for us as well. So I just keep that for now. Inside of here, let's kind of do the dance of overriding the init with the super call of init frame. And finally down here, you have to say required and fatal error. And now your application is able to compile pretty much correctly. Uh, inside of here, let me create a background color of dot yellow. Uh, one of my favorite colors, I guess. So dial numbers header, let's go back into the view controller. Uh, finish up the registration of our header. Uh, view class here, let's say dial numbers header and dot self for the actual class of the header here. The kind parameter, which is the next one, you have to actually specify a UI collection view and just type in header here. You'll get element kind section header. For the reuse identifier, we are going to create a header ID very similar to our cell ID. So let's just call this header ID. It doesn't matter exactly what you call this, but uh, this is what I'm going to use. And down here, let's just say header ID. Okay, so pretty awesome stuff. You can try to build your project now. All of the syntax highlighting is coming back, so everything looks A-OK. -okay. Uh, last thing I need to do to actually render out this header up here is to go ahead and say, let's see, view for header is probably what I would try to type in here. But uh, this isn't exactly what you have to have. So let's say view for supplementary view of kind instead. So this guy is actually the header. Uh, you can render out the footer inside this method as well, but we don't have a footer, so we are not going to deal with that <laughs> for now. So this guy, let's say header equals collection view. You have to DQ it using this call right here. Uh, DQ reusable supplementary view of kind. Let's grab the kind here. So kind uh, reuse identifier. We are going to use header ID, copy that, and copy index path as well. So that looks good. Instead of here, you know it's going to be a dialed numbers header because you actually registered this header underneath the header ID, right? So that's kind of what you get. And fix this guy with an override in the front there. That looks good. 
Uh, pretty awesome so far. Finally, you have to return a header, which is a, again, UI collection a reusable view. Uh, really hard to say a lot of these words inside of Xcode, but I will try my best to not make any mistakes there. Uh, last thing we need is some kind of size for the header. So what I mean is, for example, if you try to run this right now, I don't think you'll see anything for your header. In fact, I don't really think this method gets called. So let's see what happens here. So yeah, this method right here doesn't get called until you provide a size for header method like so. Okay, this guy is going to expect a CG size. Now the easiest way of doing this is to just use dot init and through some swift inference, it's able to kind of tell what you want. So let's just say init width and height. This guy will use view frame width to span all the way on the left side to the right side here. And this guy, if you pop in a value of, let's say, something like 200, it should look okay. And I noticed that once you provide this method here, it's actually going to render out the header. You can see this will get called just like that through the breakpoint there. So hit the continue, and now you'll see your yellow header kind of up here. Uh, one thing about the way we're rendering this out is we're using a hard-coded value of 200. So this isn't exactly the best thing to do, and I'll show you why by going back into the iPhone XS uh, 5S simulator, which is this guy on the right side. You'll see that the header that is being rendered out with a height of 200 is going to be super, super tall. Uh, I am on a Hackintosh, so this should be pretty fast to render. And this guy is really tall. I don't exactly want the header to be that tall because I still need to fit the call and uh, also the backspace button on the bottom here. So not the best way to render things out. And instead, I would like to have the header somewhere up here. And this is going to be a percentage-based calculation, which I'll show you how to do right now. Let me just drag this out of the way, open up one of these guys again. So that's my header. And that's the height of 200 here. And instead of using 200, let's just say, uh, let height equals view frame dot height and let's use a value of 20% so 0 0.2 is 20% use the height here instead and I want to see what this renders out as inside of the top here so this is going to run in the iPhone 5s and 20% is about this tall which is a lot better if you run this in the iPhone XS Max uh, you'll also see that the 20% is a pretty good value for the height of your header and uh, that's what you get at the very top there. And so now that we have a lot of this boilerplate code out of the way here, why don't we move on to something a little bit more exciting? And so what I mean is I would like to start rendering out some text inside of my header so that every time I tap on one of these buttons here, the text should be filled out inside of this label. And the way to very easily do this is to go inside of your yellow header, so dial numbers header here, why don't we remove the yellow background color and add in a label? So add subview of some kind of label. And this guy is going to be called the numbers label. So numbers label, or yeah, that sounds like a pretty good name. Doesn't matter so much, but let's call this a UI label and add in this numbers label here. Let's say numbers label dot text is going to be something like one, two, three for now. And I'm going to simply say numbers label and fill super view just like that. And one final thing I would like to do is to center this text. So text alignment equals dot center like so. I'm gonna to try to run this again. Fill super view comes from the extension method right over here, UI view layout. And once you have this, you can see that your numbers are rather small. So why don't we fix this with a particular font size, UI font, and let's say system font size, uh, something like 32. I think that's going to work for now. Uh, let's kind of see what that looks like. Again, this Hackintosh is super, super fast. So the feedback loop in running your code is very quick as well. So 32 font size looks okay to me. Why don't we now go into actually responding to the taps of all of these keys inside of my collection view. Uh, the way to do this is to obviously head back into your view controller. You want to override another method called did select item at, and every time you uh, tap on something, you can just say print index path dot item here. And I'll just show you quickly what this does in the console below. Every time I tap on one of these keys here, you'll see it being printed out. So this is the item of zero. So you'll see zero, one, two. This is probably like 
10 or something, so 9, 10, and 11. All right, so that's kind of how you respond to the selection of these cells inside of your collection and view. Uh, next thing I'll do is every time I tap on one of these buttons here, I'm going to add on to the display string up at the very top. So what I mean is I'm going to say var and display string. And this is going to be a blank string at the very beginning here. So this is the dial numbers, so dialed numbers, so numbers, and display string. Let's make this as explicit as possible. This guy, we are simply going to say dial numbers display string. I'm going to add onto it with plus equal, and you can just say like one if you really want to do so, and try to build a project now. And let's kind of go inside of our header here. You can say header dot text, see dot text, or rather the label inside of this guy. Numbers label dot text equals, let's see, dial numbers display string here. And you can try to run this, and some of you guys might not see the bug, but there is a bug that prevents the actual label at the very top to be refreshed. So you can keep on clicking on this, but nothing really happens at the top here. And the last thing you need to do is every time you tap into one of these bad boys in the middle, you want to call collection view dot reload data. This is going to force this method to be called again, hence resetting the text on the actual header numbers label. So one, two, three, four, five, six, kind of does that right here. Uh, the reason why you're seeing a one is because we're adding a one inside of the text and that's not what we want. So let number equals, I think we want to get it from this numbers array here. So let's just say numbers and index path dot item like so. And let's remove the print statement because we don't really need it. And this guy will be number and you see the number is a string variable. So just tap into that and what you'll see is every time you tap on one of the numbers, you're going to get it inside of the top area here. So one, two, three, nine, eight, seven. And that's kind of what you get. So if you keep on tapping on this, you'll see that the label actually goes off screen with the ellipses like so. The dot, dot, dot is called an ellipses, I believe. And the way to fix this kind of a problem is to go back into dial numbers header. For the actual numbers label at the very top, you can adjust the font with the property of adjust font uh, to fit width. And just set this guy to true. If you want to include some padding on the left and right, you can use a method right here, fill, fill super view with the padding of init top uh, zero. Let's use a 32, I guess that's okay. And 32 for the right side as well. And once you have this bad boy running in the simulator, you'll see that as you tap on this, as the text expands from the left side to the right side, you can get the font to actually shrink and it'll fit all of the text that is required for the label that is all the way at the top here. Now, before I wrap up today's lesson, I would like to teach you one final feature for our application, and that's the ability to highlight your cells every time you tap on these buttons here. So for example, if you click on one and hold on to it, you'll get the highlight like so, like that, and also like that. And this feature is actually pretty easy to build out. The only thing that you have to be aware of is that inside of your collection view cells, so this guy is a key cell here, here, and here. This is this file here, key cell. There's a property on a UI collection view cell called is highlighted that you want to override. And basically it's the highlight state of the cell. So click on that and just override it like so. Type in did set like that. And we'll just print out, let's see, is it, are we highlighted? Okay, let's say colon and print out is highlighted at the very end here. So copy that and paste that in here. Should be good to go. I'm going to rerun my application in the iPhone XS back simulator right now. You're going to see that every time I tap on one of these cells at the very middle, you're going to see is highlighted down right here. So are we highlighted? False and click on that. You'll see we are true for a very brief moment in time and then we are false yet again. And so that's kind of what we get. Uh, the last thing I would like to do is to actually modify the code inside of here. Now, every time we are in the highlighted state of true, we want to make sure the background color is a different color, right? So what exactly do I mean? Well, I am going to say background color equals some kind of color based on the is highlighted Boolean state. So let's use a ternary operator here. 
let's use a dark gray if we are highlighted otherwise we are going to grab this color here let me just copy and paste for now not always the best idea but we'll just do this for now and i'll maybe show you the better way of uh, actually declaring a variable for this color here so let's click on one you'll see that the background color is now this dark gray color if we let go the highlight is going to be false and hence that's kind of why it goes back to the regular color of white 0.9 so uh, what i was mentioning earlier is to actually take this color and kind of extract it into a variable so if i'll private uh, let default background or bg color whatever you want to call this guy and this will be your default background color like that and modify this as well so the good thing about this is you can just modify this color and you won't have to change it in multiple places it makes your code a lot easier to maintain uh, last thing i would like to do is to make sure that every time you tap on this uh, the text inside the middle also changes to white color and the logic is very similar we are going to say digits label dot text color uh, if we are highlighted so it is highlighted then we're going to use the dot white otherwise the default color is black okay so i'm going to do this one more time for the letters label right at the middle bottom here and run this code one more time uh, again i really love my hackintosh because this process is very very fast compared to uh, let's say a macbook air i know a lot of you guys are on a macbook air and uh, the compile time is really slow so if you can upgrade to a better machine i do recommend that you do that but anyhow you can see that as i tap onto the cell here the text color is now changing to be whatever color you specify in your code obviously and the nice thing about the is highlighted variable is that whenever you tap on this guy and you kind of move over to a different cell you'll see that the collection view automatically knows if you're either on top of the cell or away from the cell like so and uh, you don't really have to implement any hacks to figure out if you're on the you know the hit test of the cell or not just use the is highlighted and you should be okay so clicking on that moving over and then moving back you can see the actual mouse is pretty much acting like your finger alrighty everybody let's wrap up today's lesson right here if you're interested in how to render out the call button and the backspace on the bottom right uh, let me know down in the comments below the way to do this is actually pretty tricky uh, so i'm going to leave that out for today's lesson if you want to learn more about ios development in general make sure to check out the courses down in the description below if you want to download the source code the link is down there as well and that's going to be it for today if you like today's video make sure to give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel here i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye